In June of 2016, Hillary Rodham Clinton won the Democratic Party's nomination for the presidency of the United States. The New York Times called her nomination a thunderbolt from history. Clinton was not the first woman ever to run for the presidency, but some 168 years after the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention that placed women's political, social, and economic rights on the agenda, and a full half century after the emergence of the modern women's liberation movement, she was the first to win the nomination of a major party. And then she lost to a proudly arrogant male. How do we, who have been exploring women's history and watching women slowly shed the mantle of coverture, make sense of this? Could we have forecast this defeat? Well, perhaps. Revolutionary changes occurred in work and family life at the end of the 20th century and the start of the 21st. Impelled by the continuing search for equality, as well as by the legislative and judicial momentum of the 70s, conceptions of gender altered dramatically enough to undermine traditional perceptions of family and wage work for men and women. The ideal of a family wage broke down, and with it, the male breadwinner ideology. Old ideas of separate spheres for women and men vanished. The scaffolding that had sustained the sexual division of labor tottered. The idea of gender itself came under attack as sexual identity became a fluid category, no longer sharply divisible into male and female and subject to choice rather than biology. Unions between men and women dissolved into new patterns of partnership. Lifestyles lived by one's own sexual preferences no longer determined any individual's access to child-rearing, tax benefits, health care, pensions, or jobs. All these changes signaled possibilities of greater freedom for all. They seem destined to encourage a continuing expansion of women's roles beyond the household. And yet, inequality expanded dramatically. Women faced stagnant wages, competition from a global economy, new technologies that undermined old patterns of production. Apparent gains in workplace involvement for many, mostly privileged women, imposed on the less privileged the terrible burden of working at low-paying jobs without much in the way of family or social support. By the 1990s, a new and changing social, political, and economic environment had changed the conversation about work and family life, and it brought with it new political realities.